Good morning guys, I'm Cat Hunter and today I'm going to teach you a little bit about how to catch flatheads and where to find them and uh, just kind of show you the basic principle to flathead fishing. So the first thing we want to look at is location. So you want to go flathead fishing but you don't know where to go. The first thing you need to do is get on the internet to confirm that there are flatheads in that body of water that you're going to be fishing. Because you don't want to be wasting your time fishing somebody where that doesn't even have flatheads. And there's a lot of places out there that like that that doesn't have flatheads, but it looks really good, but there's no flatheads there. So just get on the internet, look around, find where you're going to fish, learn that body of water, and learn it well. Because you got to know your body of water to be able to catch flatheads in these rivers. say just persistence. Persistence pays off. Just staying on the water time and time again and knowing where the flatheads are going to be and what body of water has them and what body of water doesn't. And the second thing we want to look at is rigging and tackle. Then once you finally find which river and body of water you're going to be flathead fishing on, then you need the right tackle rig up. So we're just going to go to my Facebook page, one of our fan pages. We've got so much information on here, it's just you know, if you need flathead information, you can always come here. The basic slip lead rig is your, going to be your basic go-to rig for flatheads. Um, the kale hook is a great hook for flatheads. It's the number one hook we choose for flatheads. It's got this really wide gap that really reaches back there and gets in the corner of that flathead's mouth. He's got that big cheek. You can see we've got a, just a barrel swivel here, snailed to a kale hook with a bead to protect that knot right there from that four ounce slip sinker. And there's a lot of different rigs on the market you can use that will work. You can see over here in our comments feed, we've got all kinds of stuff over here that people's, you know, has used. So there's there's a ton of rig out there. There's a tons of there's a ton of different hooks out there to use. You know, the the rigging part of it's gonna be up to you, but like I said, the basic slip lead rig is your is your go-to rig. This is what you're going to start out using. Let's take a look at baits. Choosing the right bait is one of the most important aspects of flathead fishing. Sometimes you need live bait, sometimes you need cut baits. Now you don't need a big boat with a big huge live well to keep bluegills alive. If you're trying to keep bluegills, bluegills are very simple to keep alive. A simple aerator and a cooler is pretty sufficient. Um, sometimes when I'm out catching my bluegills, I don't even put an aerator in there. They're so strong, especially if you're using some sort of small sunfish. Your number one bait for flathead catfish is going to be your sunfish. There's all sorts of different species of sunfish. There's large red breast sunfish like this one here. There's, there's bluegills. Bluegills make great baits. We love our bluegills. And there's bullheads. Bullheads make fine baits. A lot of times you'll get back in these backwater sloughs and you'll get in these bluegills and then all of a sudden the bullheads get fired up. Then you're catching a whole bunch of bullheads like in this right here. All these were caught out of a little ditch. There's so many different kinds of bullheads. Some people call them polywogs. Black bullheads, yellow bullheads, brown bullheads. There's a whole bunch of different kinds of bullheads. And if you're having trouble catching your bullheads, um, I've got videos on YouTube that'll actually go in and show you exactly how to catch bullheads where you need to catch them. Shiners are always a great bait to use. If you can get shiners large enough, shiners are a great bait for flatheads. Flatheads love their live bait, but I tell you what, they will eat fresh cut skipjack. Cut the head off, usually it's the head section that they want over all else. But during the winter time, they'll take cut bait readily. And there's other sorts of shads you can use. We've got there's thread fin herring and there's gizzard shad. Both of these make really good live bait for flatheads, but they also work pretty well as cut baits. So and it's usually the head section that the flatheads want. Now if you live down in the brackish areas, like down in the Louisiana, down in the down in the lower end of Florida, down in the Mobile Delta, you can even get away with using some types of saltwater baits like finger mullets and bull minnows. And places where it's legal, there's all sorts of other sunfish that you can use. There's there's green sunfish, there's orange spotted sunfish, there's you know, there's spotted sunfish, and then you can even use crappie. Crappies work really well. Suckerfish is a bait that I like. If you can get your hands on some big suckerfish, you can really catch some really nice flatheads with these guys. And there's another bait going around that some guys are using. They call them black salties. They raise them in these little pins. I've heard these baits work really well too. I haven't really used them, but I'm sure they will where they're legal. Tilapia is another bait that's being widely used out west. 
It's been stocked in a lot of lakes, it's in a lot of the canals, and a lot of guys are having really good success on the tilapia. For eater sized fish, you can even get down as far as using crayfish and worms. I mean, I guess that works pretty well. I've caught flatheads on them, but you're not going to catch anything of substantial size with them. And once again, guys, the goldfish always works well. All sorts of creek chubs work, and even even down to smaller catfish, where they're legal. Blue cats and channel cats work well, too. Finding flatheads. The first thing I always try to find when I'm flathead fishing is log jams, piles of wood, structure. The bigger the pile of wood, the more likely the more numbers of flatheads will be concentrated underneath that pile of wood. And also as a given rule of thumb, the biggest baddest spots are usually occupied by the biggest baddest flathead. When we're flathead fishing, we're always relating to some sort of structure. We like to back up to it, get pretty close to it, set out four baits back there, and let them go down to the bottom. Going down the river, there's so many different locations for flatheads. As long as you stick to key elements like structure, rocks, even bluff banks, places where flathead catfish can hide, you'll do good. Marking locations. Okay, so here we are. We're on the river. You don't need a big fancy GPS or big fancy chart plotter. There's plenty of apps on the market that you can download for marking your locations because marking your locations is critical. Spend a little time on the water. You don't want to be fumbling around in the dark trying to find out where you're going to fish because once the sun goes down everything looks like a good spot. So let's say we're motoring along, we're in our little boat, we're going along, we're checking out spots, we're checking out flathead spots. Okay, we're moving on. We come up to a few wing dikes. Over here across the way, we want to put a spot there. Okay, we've got our first fishing spot marked out. Just put a little waypoint on it. Boom. We've got our spot. And uh, let's say we like one of these wing dikes right over here. Right there. Boom. Let's say we're only going to fish to midnight tonight. It's going to be a short night. So we're going to keep it close to the ramp. We're but just study real hard. Spend some time looking around. Don't just run out there, jump onto a spot and say, wow, this looks good. I'm going to fish here. Okay. So we've got a few spots. Moving up here. We've got some little stuff, some rocks and stuff hanging out over here. Let's say we want to fish there. It looks nice. These are all examples, guys. So here we go. We're moving up river. We're coming around this big bend over here. We like this log jam. There's a nice scour hole behind it. Let's pretend. We mark that guy out. We're still heading up river. We're still marking locations and looking for fish. We're not jumping to any conclusions and just throwing baits out wherever. We're actually we're doing some scouting. So here's our next spot. We're just going to throw a happy little marker right there. Now, now you've got your locations to fish. So what do we do? You fish your first hole. Usually you give it about an hour or two and then you move on. Going down to your second hole if you get no bites back down on it. You already got your spots marked so there's no fumbling around or looking for nothing. You back down on it, drop your anchor, boom, deploy your baits as fast as possible. You don't want to be fumbling around making too much noise. Give that spot an hour or so. Move on down to your next hole. Back down on it, drop your baits, give it a little while. If that don't work, move on down to your next hole. Back down on it, give it a little while, and also also note where you're going to drop anchor or tie off to because tying up is very useful. Back down on it. Here we go. You've got two spots close close by each other, so this is going to be an easy area to fish. You got your scour hole. You're backing down. You drop your baits. Boom. You catch a few fish. You move on. Fall back over here. Fall back on this spot. Hit a few spots. Move on. And then by the time you make it to your last location, guys, you're going to be a lot closer to the ramp. You shouldn't be going up river and down river and up river and down river. That's not how you operate. Getting a bite and setting the hook. Another aspect of flathead fishing, guys, is timing the hook set. Flatheads act funny sometimes. Sometimes they don't take the bait immediately. They sit there and they pull on. So you, bam, you give it to them. Let them eat that bait a little bit. Because what they're doing is the bait's gone immediately. Yeah. They don't mess around. When that bait, when they swim up to it, they, and the bait's gone. But what you're waiting for is that fish to actually turn and swim away with the hook. Because when he's sitting there looking straight at you, if yeah. you snatch too hard, you can actually nice. pull that hook right out of his mouth. So what we're waiting for 
is that fish to turn and go the other way. I know this is a little bit off topic right now, but guys, make sure you bring a dip net. I didn't even put that in here, but you don't want to be fumbling around trying to reach down the water and grab these fish. Bring you along the dip net to make sure that you get these fish in the boat because it's just, you're going to hook a big fish and you're going to lose them at the side of the boat trying to get him in. Night versus day. Nighttime versus daytime. What are the differences between these two? Flatheads follow very predictable patterns. Usually during the daytime you can find them hunkered down behind some sort of structure, behind logs, usually in deeper water. Um, they'll be hanging out in the they'll be hanging out the head of creek mouths. It's just kind of their predictable habits they make. Usually they're always buried deep inside structure. Now what's interesting is when the sun falls, flatheads begin to make these huge circular motions inside that initial area where they're at. And usually right at sunset, this is when you get your first hit. And what these flatheads are going to do, they're going to disperse throughout the river. They're going to leave those dark layers and they're going to move up in the shallows and they're going to start hunting. They're going to move up to the head of these holes and they're going to start hunting. They're going to move up on sandbars, they're going to move back in feeder creeks. They're just going to disperse throughout the entire river before falling back to those daytime layers in daytime. Big baits versus small baits. Big baits versus small baits. What's the difference? Well, the difference is if you're using big baits, you're probably not going to get a lot of bites. And if you do get a lot of bites, you're probably going to miss a lot of bites, but you're looking for the big fish. Me, personally, I like to bring along a few live, a few big baits and keep one big bait out. But as a general rule of thumb, and I can promise you guys, small baits will catch big catfish. Uh, we've had nights where we've caught over 400 pounds of catfish flatheads, big ones, small ones, on little bitty baits about that big, less than six inch bluegills. And you know, some nights when you don't always need big gigantic baits, I'm just saying. Big baits do work. I won't turn my nose up to a big bait whenever I catch one. I'm like, oh yeah, that's a good one. But for most part, we're gonna use smaller baits. Weather conditions and moon phases. Pay attention to the weather. Follow fronts, especially during the colder months of the year. You don't want to get stuck behind a front after a front moves through and the pressure's going down all of a sudden the barometer flips and goes straight up. Pay attention to the weather, watch the weather, and watch your river gauges. Moon phases. This is always a controversial topic. A lot of guys will say they catch flatheads during full moons, they catch them, it doesn't matter, and it doesn't. Always remember the general rule of flathead fishing. Anytime you are on the water, you have a better chance of catching a flathead than you do when you're sitting on the couch. With that being said, I can guarantee you the right moon phase will catch you more flatheads. Now, whenever possible, you want to fish the new moon. The new moon is the darker moon. It's the best moon, the best moon phase to fish. The full moon, especially super moons, are always tough fishing. Okay, if you can see right over here at our little graph, the bigger the moon, the higher the tides. Nothing affects planet Earth more than the gravitational forces that that moon puts on this planet. The moon's going to vary from 225,000 miles to 252,000 miles from Earth. The closer the moon is, the lunar gravitational forces it's putting on Earth and these fish. And flatheads are very susceptible to these lunar, lunar, lunar activities. And this, is, this has been proven. There was actually a study done in a laboratory somewhere up on the east coast. This guy, he took a bunch of these mussels that would always open up during the full moon. It al they always opened up and it's just, they're, they're, it was their programming. So this scientist did an experiment. So he took a handful of these mussels, took them down to his laboratory deep inside his basement and put them in an aquarium. And he waited and these mussels remained closed. Well, during the night of the full moon, all the mussels along the beach opened up. But you know what? Deep down inside that basement, where that guy had those mussels, those mussels actually opened up inside the basement. They couldn't see the moon, but they could feel the moon. They could feel the pressures telling that muscle that the full moon was out. It makes a lot of fish bite better. Offshore fishing, snappers and mingos, they, they bite really well during the full moon. But something about flatheads, they just they just don't like it. And like I said, guys, we caught them during the full moon. Super moons, whew, that's hard fishing too. But once again, we've caught big fish on super moons. Seasons. 
springtime, summertime, fall time. These are all great times to fish. Pick your poison. But during the winter months, something amazing happens, starts to happen with flatheads. Flatheads actually begin to conjugate in large groups. They'll find these holes in these areas where they just conjugate. And that water temperature gets cold. The, the colder the water, the more flatheads tend to conjugate. And guys, you, you got to be careful when these fish are con concentrated like this. Um, like any big predator, you know, they become vulnerable at this time of year from over harvest. And a lot of people, they'll, they'll find these fish and they will just, I mean, they'll clean a hole out. You can see during the winter months, guys, these fish become so lethargic that you can swim down there and actually just grab them with your hands. I mean, a lot of guys that actually fish for flatheads in the wintertime, they say they're jigging them or whatever. They're actually just dropping their jigs down into a pile of these flatheads that are concentrated in their wintering holes and they're actually just snagging. Guys, I hope you enjoyed my little presentation on how to find flatheads for beginners. There's so much to learn about this. You can't figure these fish out by one little video, but I hope this video helps out. Anytime you've been watching this video, guys, don't forget to hit that little button up top and subscribe and we'll talk more about flatheads in the future. Until next time, we'll see you.